want to say thank you so so much for clicking on this video the fact that you're willing to sacrifice just a few minutes out of your day to watch this video really does mean the world to me and today is actually incredibly incredibly awesome because today I'm going to be collaborating with Zach Cherry who's going to pop up onto the screen right now hey guys cool awesome guys this is an absolute gem of a dude and I pretty much like I watched one of his videos and I was like flip up to get in contact with him so we've literally just been messaging over Instagram and we were like we have got to collaborate somehow and so we decided to watch Eli, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. And guys, one thing that's actually really, really, really cool is that I'm actually in South Africa, and Zach, he's stationed in Canada. So we are literally on opposite sides of the world at the moment. For me, I think it's 9 o'clock in the morning. Zach, what's the time for you at the moment? Um, it is 1.27 in the morning. In the morning. Jeez. Okay, so like there is a serious time difference between the two of us. I just think it's really cool that like YouTube has brought the two of us together and it's our love for film and our love for movies. I just think it's really, really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I would have never imagined doing this when I started the channel, but I, I love this. Sum up the film, it's about this kid called Eli and basically there's a lot of hauntings, there's a lot of like um, supernatural things that's going on, but the just brief outline, especially when it comes to the introduction, is that this kid Eli, he's basically a bubble boy. You know, I don't know if you guys ever watched that movie, but he basically can't go outside. He can't stand germs. Otherwise, he pretty much just dies. This is basically like the horror version of, of Bubble Boy or the boy yeah, in the plastic really bubble. What, what would it be What if it was like the love child of like that movie and another horror movie? Like what, which one do you think it would be like? Oh, like maybe like... Okay. I would say Insidious, maybe. I'm not a huge horror film, but I loved Insidious. So yeah. I can see elements of Insidious and Bubble Boy coming together here. Yeah. Um, Definitely like something with like a child. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh gosh. But honestly, like to me, the film started off really, really, really strong. I mean, the opening scene, um, it's just with Eli. And Eli was actually played by Charlie Shotwell. And I think he did a great performance. Like generally when it comes to kid actors I can be a little bit nervous like because sometimes you can tell they're acting but I never got that with him he actually gave a very strong performance in my opinion yeah he did like he was pretty much like mostly him on the screen for, throughout the entire movie and he carried the whole thing mm. and yeah, literally, it, it was it was his film like it's about Eli and he carried the whole film this was an Eli project yeah. and um Charlie, he, he did a flipping great job. Honestly, I really enjoyed his performance throughout this film. Were there any performances that stood out to you? Um, yeah, like definitely like the, I didn't even look up his name, but yeah, like the, the kid who played Eli. There were some moments where that were kind of a little irritating for me when he would be like freaking out and like yelling at people. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so like, like, yeah, it yeah. was just like, because it was just one of those, like, you know, like, bratty little, like, children in He was a bratty movies. little child that time. He, that yeah, he was, he was something, but, um, but I mean, like, understandably so. Like, he's in a, yeah. a pretty bad situation, like, with his, his, like, health and, like, this autoimmune disease that he has. Um, I think that, like, the father really stood out to me. I don't... I love... I, I haven't, honestly, I've he seen was him in things before. In the movie. What's that? He was probably my favorite character in yeah, the movie, The Father. because he was just, like, there was so much going on with him. Like, you didn't, yeah. like, he played it so well, like, there, you knew that there was something going on, like, under the surface, but just, yeah. like, what he was showing you. This character, actually, this character was the most annoying to me, and that was that Haley character, who was played by Sadie Sink. Um, you guys might recognize her from Stranger Things. She was that little girl that was constantly throwing the rocks at the window and talking to Eli and stuff like that. Okay, I, I liked her, actually. I Really? I did I thought, not enjoy her at all. Well, no, because I, like, and initially, like, I did, I had no idea. There's a lot of mystery about, like, who she was. Yeah. So I, I kind of, like, that was the character that I was, like, making, like, conjectures about the most. And I wasn't sure where it was going. And, like, then there would be, like, I'm, like, I'm pretty sure that this is, like, who she is. But then she would even say it herself. Like, I'm not like this if, like, that's what you think yeah. it is. So... I don't know, like, she like she brought a little edge to it, like, I, I, I liked her. Before we start getting to spoiler territory, let's just talk about a few things that, that aren't spoilery, just things that we actually enjoyed about the film. Like, for example, I really, as we mentioned, we, I loved the performances, um, but I also really enjoyed the cinematography. There were some really, really clever shots, like, especially the opening shots in the whole film, where Eli puts his hand on the window, and then he takes it off and there's that like slight handprints and that like kind of feeds into the rest of the film with windows and mirrors. 
I just thought, and, and reflections in general, I thought that was a very clever opening shot. No, for sure. Yeah, that drive, like, to the medical facility, I guess, is, is what we're calling it. And just, like, the driveway and all those, like, trees that were kind of, like, overhanging. They were almost, like, just very, like, demonic in, in appearance. Like, they were just, like, hands, like, gr like grabbing this little opening towards this, this mansion. I have a... Okay, so this is, like, completely unrelated, but the... Um, the mansion itself, like the inside of the mansion, did it not look like the interiors of the X mansion to you? Like 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 from the X-Men movies, like the Charles Xavier. I can actually see why you're saying that. I can yeah. now. Now that you said it, I can see it. I was actually giving getting more of like a Resident Evil vibe from it. I yeah. I, no, no, no. I totally got that too. Yet. And especially with like the medical yeah. facility aspect of it and just like exactly, yeah. the, the key code entries. And it would have it would have been fun, because I feel like they didn't really explore like they they didn't have such a huge set with this movie i feel like they only had like so many rooms and then like the so a lot of the rooms were just like refitted for every scene but if it was if they made it seem more like it was like this huge maze and that there was a lot more exploring going on like i think that would have maybe upped a little bit more of that that vibe of like this yeah, no, scary mansion but as it is i just like i looked at him like this looks like this looks like the the mansion from the x-men on the inside i actually i had yeah. to look up i don't think it is the same mansion but it looks so much like it there and there isn't a whole lot of there isn't a whole lot of actors in this movie because there's just like there's the parents we haven't talked about the mom yet oh what the you, mom what did you think oh, of her okay so she is oh i've got a lot to say about her I'm are we gonna wait till the spoilers yeah, no, 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 no. We, we can okay. we can talk about it now before we go into spoiler talk yeah. Brilliant performance, like, you can tell that she loves Eli, there's a very loving relationship there, and you can see that she's absolutely crushed by the fact that her son, this boy that she loves, just can't live a normal life. And like, it was heartbreaking, especially in the opening scenes of the film, where it takes a more realistic approach to things, and you think it's legitimately going to be about this kid that has this disease that doesn't allow him to have this normal life. Like, my heart broke for her. And I think the actress did a great job showing what it's like to be a mom that's trying to have faith, that has all this hope, but is still scared. I, mean, I thought she did an okay job. I, I do think that they picked like a really good like pair of actors for like the mom and the son because they look so much alike. That was like that was the one thing that like stuck out to me. Um, but I just found like the performance from the father was just so much better, and I just like. It, it was, was hard it for was, me to. I will agree with you there. It was hard for me to buy these two characters together as like a married couple. I don't. I don't know what yeah. it was. They just. I think. I think a reason for that is I will explain when we get into spoiler talk because they kind of yeah. reveal that after half. Yeah, there's definitely the there's definitely like more to it, but I don't I don't know if that was necessarily like because there are those like scenes and and where they you know they have these clashes. I I feel feel more it's just like in the performance. Like I don't think that she is as good of, as an actor, sorry to say, yeah. as as the guy who played the husband. Like, the setup. And and before we get into spoiler reviews, I just, like, I wanted to talk about, like, this, because I, uh, I feel like with where they were going with this movie, they didn't properly set it up. There could have yeah, been, like... No, I, like, I have to agree with you 100% there. Mm -hmm. Like, it would have been nice to have just, like, a little bit of hints just to kind of, like, test the, the audience's intelligence rather than just spring it on us like this big twist at the end so i feel like it, it kind of it not exactly came out of left field but it was it just was almost more so it just happened because they wrote it that way it wasn't it wasn't like set up in in like little shots or scenes where they could have you know played with the audience a little bit like we knew that the, like something was afoot but it wasn't really explored well enough and, and what did you think of the soundtrack by any chance like did you did you think it was good do you think it was strong Honestly, I don't even, like, I, because this was That's two nights ago that I yeah. watched it. I was not paying attention to the soundtrack. Bad me. I, I should have been. Hmm. No, you see, because that, that, to be 100% honest, that was the thing that I noticed when I was watching the film. I don't ever like to bash a film, but to me, the soundtrack never captured me once. And I think that's a, a reflection on, on just its caliber. I don't think it was necessarily the song, strongest soundtrack out there. I don't ever remember a moment where it kind of boosted the emotion of the film. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like it had a the whole movie just like came off as very generic to me. Like yeah. it could have been it could have been like any 
horror movie. So I mean, like that that could definitely be a tribute to the soundtrack. I know there was a lot of jump scares in this movie too. There were some very creative jump scares. I won't lie. There were some very creative jump scares, and also also talking about going back to what I was mentioning earlier with reflections and windows and mirrors and all of that. They used that very well, in my opinion, to show to to increase the horror, to increase the tension in those those haunting scenes that take place at night. Okay guys, we are about to jump into some serious spoilers right now, like some hectic stuff. So we are giving you a spoiler warning right now, okay? Are you fine with that, Zach? Three, two, one. Okay, but guys, the big spoiler, the big spoiler that really took me is that he is the son of the devil. That that was a big one for me. I know, but crazy. Um, yeah. I honestly, I liked this twist. It was, it was refreshing, especially considering where everything in the movie was going to this point it was just like it was different like you don't see a whole lot of things like this and it's more akin to like rosemary's baby or the omen and movies like that and those are some of my favorite like types of horror movies i'm not like i like the the paranormal like hauntings but like anything to do with like satan I feel like elevates a movie. I mean, obviously, if if done correctly, like will yeah, elevate well, the like, movie. To be hundred percent honest, to be hundred percent honest, like Satan is the big bad. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can't absolutely. get much worse than Satan. So if you are going to make something evil, you know, you might as well bring out the big guns. But like, my biggest problem. Sorry, can I just say my biggest problem with the entire film is. So as we, as I literally just said, Satan, he's the big bad. Like, you you don't want to support Satan. And now Eli is the son of Satan, and I can only imagine that that means that Satan is going to use Eli to spread mischief and evil around the world. And so now, I can't exactly support Eli, because he's going to be a jerk and kill a bunch of people, I guarantee it. And so at the end of the day, it looks like the father was actually the good character, he had the best interest in terms of like world safety. And so like, I feel like really bummed out that Eli just like killed him like that because honestly he was the, the moral compass of the story when you think about it. He was the one that was trying to save Eli, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, 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 okay, I want to say two things to that effect. First of all, we have to talk about hit the father's death scene because he yes. like exploded like in, like it's like his face like sucked it into literally it's imploded. Like, it literally imploded. It was like yeah. putty. <laughs> that was like a really funny effect. I don't know, like I... I it was interesting, it was cool, but I just, I thought it looked so ridiculous. Like, I you had to go back like and watch me. it over and over. You know what it actually over. looked like to me? I think it was literally just like an invisible punch. Like, someone just punched him so hard in the face that his face just went inside. Did, okay, have you, okay, call back. And sorry, I do this a lot, I like reference like no, other movies, fine. but um, did you ever see uh, Jason Goes to Hell? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I've watched any of the, those movies. There's, yeah, there's just this this scene um, in this diner <laughs> where, like, the the one, like, the woman cook is, like, trying to attack Jason or, like, this guy who's possessed by Jason because it's such a ridiculous movie. And I, he, like, I think he knocks her with, like, a frying pan or something, but she, like, her face is, like, literally, like, her mouth is inside of her face. And that's what this <laughs> effect looked like until his, like, head exploded. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But okay, and then the other thing I wanted to say about about the father is like I didn't get like this is the question I have like is Eli the the antagonist of this film because, since he didn't know that he was like would it, if he had like gone on living his life if they had like supposedly cured him of his evilness which he we didn't even know he had because there like there was no hints that he was evil. And that's more along the lines of what I was saying before. Like, there was no setup that he had ever done anything evil. And if they, if everything had gone accordingly, like, could he have just been... He, like, he would never have known. He would have just been a, a normal, like, boy. And, like, that's actually, super that's happy. That's so true. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, so this is just for me. This is just for me. If you... I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember that scene at the very beginning... Where there were those bikers that kind of threw the crack at Eli, he fell, he ripped open right, his suit, yes. all of that. And then, and then what actually happens is when they're leaving, they kind of drive out of that hotel motel area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to throw screenshots up on the screen because this caught my attention straight away. But while they were driving away, there was this big billboard. And on the billboard it said, uh, sorry, I'm looking through my notes now. On the billboard, um, it said Proverbs 19 verse 9. And, and the verse is actually, the false witness will not go unpunished and he who tells lies will perish. And so throughout the whole film, because this was at the very beginning, and I spotted it straight away, so I googled it and everything, okay. and I was doing a bunch of research on, the, on, this, on this verse. So throughout the whole movie, I didn't trust anyone. 
I was honestly telling, I, I treated everyone like they were lying. And when it comes to it, at the end of the film, everyone was lying. Mm-hmm. But to me, and like, the yeah, that's the whole the, the yeah. whole movie, like the trailer, like the the letters rearranged. It's a lie. Yeah. Like yeah. you knew that. No, that's very. I didn't even catch that. I mean, I know I saw the thing in the trailer, like lie. So I mean, I like I kind of thought like there was gonna be something off about it. But honestly, like I kind of, as a, the movie went on, I wasn't really thinking about the whole concept of of this being a lie too much. But Eli is definitely a unreliable narrator. Like everything that we see from his perspective is not the truth. But at the same time, like we don't we don't know that he knows that he's good. Like he has no idea about this. Like he only finds this information out at the end. But it seems like as soon as he finds it out, he just kind of kind of turns into an asshole because he's yeah. You know, That's decides, so true. Like, he literally he puts on his red hoodie. He looks like a little demon kid. He kills a bunch of nuns slash nurses. And that's that. And then he decides he's going to be evil. And he's going to go off on, on an adventure with his stepsister to go meet Satan. So, like... <laughs> and But, like, this is the thing for me. Going back to the idea of lying. And maybe I'm just reading into it too much. But I think directors and, and movie makers and stuff like that, they only ever show you what they want you to see. So, for them to include that verse at the beginning. And then, in my opinion, the one that told the biggest lie, which was the mother. She was the only one that didn't get punished. You know what I mean? She was the only one that didn't get killed. And what I find so interesting about the mom is that she's the one that pretty much made a deal with the devil, said, hey, yo, yo what's up, Lucifer? What's up, Satan? Give me a baby. She's the one that still continued to try to pursue a relationship with Christ. Like when it came to her and the father and, the, and her husband, the husband was like, he, you never see him pray. The mother's always the one that's praying. And there's even that scene where she's praying, Lord, please just protect my son. Make sure the surgery goes okay. And he's like, are you really father, doing this right now? Yeah. Yeah. And, and there was even this one dig at the very beginning of the movie. And this is the moment you knew something was up. Is where she said, all we've got to have is faith. And he said, I've always been faithful. I don't know if you remember that. Right, scene. right. That's, that's, I do remember that. And I, and I, I, like, that's part of the whole thing where, like, you kind of see this, like, this dynamic between them where you know that something is off. There's, and especially that one scene where they're, like, when they're, they're, like, we're going to be waiting right outside here. And then as soon as he goes through hands. the doors, yeah, they're holding the hands and then they let go. Like, they're just, and it's they just all, yeah. like, a so facade. You know that, yeah. yeah. No, so it's, 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 inc it's, it's really interesting. Like, this, everyone's, so like everyone is lying, and everyone's been lying to Eli. No one's been mm -hmm. telling him the truth. No one's actually helping him fundamentally. Yeah. They're trying to help him in their own ways, but none of it is helping him from his perspective. Mm -hmm. So I when you pose the yeah, question... Like they're, seemingly, they're using science to cure him, but like, I don't... And they're, it's never really established what these doctors are actually doing. Like, they're, they're drilling holes in him and, and things, but it's... It's so vague and ambiguous that we, like, it, it's obviously a religious thing because as it turns out, these doctors are actually, like, they work with the church. When you look at it all in hindsight, like, definitely, and like what you were saying, the things that were, like, kind of shown throughout, it does kind of make the father seem more like the good guy in the yeah, film. Yeah, he's like even though, but like, hero. Yeah, but even though, like, everything that he was doing and like right up to the end was just like very much against Eli and at this point like Eli like he had no idea so it was just like he was still the villain or like one of them like he was still trying to like eliminate Eli but it definitely it's when you look back in hindsight you and it sets up this relationship he was never the father he was the stepfather and it was and it kind of like harkens back to like at the beginning when he was when he made that comment because he was um because he was talking about the car and he's like piece of shit and then, and then they're like, it's okay. And like, I was talking about you. And like, when they said that, that's when I knew like, no, you're not, you, you don't like this kid. And it was like, it definitely like had this dynamic where it just seemed like he was kind of forcing himself to, to love this child. And you yeah, didn't know, see, you didn't like, know why. That's actually where I think Paul is so admirable. And sorry, I, I just realized something now. So while we were talking about it, I don't know if the, the, the movie director, the movie makers did this on purpose, but the father's name is Paul and... Also, one of like the, the, the early church members was Saul that became Paul, and he was very instrumental in growing the early church. I don't know if they did that on purpose or not, but especially like when you consider the fact that Paul is the one that's trying to get rid of the evil, maybe they did that on purpose, I don't know. But I just think it's a testament to almost Paul's character. It's the fact that he didn't want this demon baby, and that's pretty much what Eli is, he's a demon baby. 
And so he's the one that's had to like uproot his life. He's the one that's had to get, you know, he had to sell the car. He, he keeps telling, we've put everything on the line for this. Meaning that he's made so many sacrifices. And whether it's for the betterment of Eli or for the betterment of his own life or for the betterment of the entire world, what he's still trying to do, he believes is morally correct. Um, and so like, I do see him as like the unsung hero of the film because he sacrificed so much out of his wife's unfaithfulness and his wife's desire, and he's the one that got punished for it. Like, I didn't love this movie, but like, when I think of a movie and after I see it and I, I'm like, hey, well, that was stupid. But then I like think about it more. That's kind of a testament to maybe how well it actually did do its job because there's these yeah. lingering like residual thoughts and you if you find yourself going back and thinking about a movie that it obviously did something right because a movie that's yeah. that did something wrong is something that is forgettable and like you see it and then you never think about it again unless someone brings it up and you're like oh that movie was terrible <laughs> <laughs> that's so true and you know the fact is we've been talking about this movie now for like how long sorry my, i've had you press re-record my camera um like, i'm at 34 minutes yeah we're, we've been talking about this film for 34 minutes so it clearly did yeah. something right mm -hmm. and so is it a good movie or not i think that's a discussion that we we still need to actually have but i i definitely enjoyed elements of it i think and personally, I feel like it lost the plot towards the end. Mm -hmm. I think it, it tried to reveal too much too quickly. Yeah. Like especially it, at the end. You're, you're absolutely right. Like, they just, it kind of, like, all came out of nowhere. And it seemed a little, like, in the dialogue especially. Like, you 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 can follow along enough to, to understand what had happened here. She was barren and unable to conceive of a child with Paul. So she prayed to God and... When God wouldn't answer her prayers, she turned to the devil himself. And that's that's the whole that's the gist of it. And they don't they just pretty much like reference that and then you understand exactly what happened. But it, it came out of nowhere. There was no there was no slow build up, no tension throughout to, to kind of get to this point. It just it came out of nowhere. And that whole scene where cause cause he went down into those like catacombs underneath the the mansion, which is probably like why it seemed very Resident Evil as well. Like, where did that come from? Like that and that scene, like it just looked so bizarre and out of place for the movie. Like, when did the, where was this thing the whole time? But um, yeah, they definitely they threw it at us. However, that that scene, the imagery in that scene where he kind of like lifts the the doctors up, and their their arms are are spread out like their the crosses. And they're floating in the air and they're circling around him and then he turns them upside down so they're like the inverted cross and then they combust into flames and they're still like circling around him. I think like that that was a very like cool moment. And you don't you don't see like that in a lot of movies. So I, I think that that was probably my favorite part of the movie, just in that moment. And that came with the whole kind of like plot twist and, and revelation. Do we think do we think that a lot of dedicated followers of Christ are going to be watching Eli? <laughs> um, I don't know. You see, I'd, I'd like to consider myself a, a dedicated follower of Christ, and uh, maybe it's because I didn't watch the trailer for Eli. But the whole devil baby, demons born, really came out of nowhere for me. And actually, sorry, while we're talking about that, and we're talking about him going under the catacombs and stuff, I think that's why it's actually so cool that these kids were able to come back and they were able to haunt Eli or, or help him. It's because they've actually got supernatural properties. They are they are the, the son of the devil, or well, the children of the devil, and maybe that's why they're able to come back, you know, across the veil, and and interact with Eli, even though they're dead, because they aren't human. I mean, like I'm not a religious person, so I I don't know all like the, like this. That's just semantics to me. I think that mm. that that it was scene... honestly it was very cool imagery. It was a yeah. very cool looking scene. Yeah. It and definitely, I, it's, it left, it, it, it was something memorable that I could take away from yeah. that movie. And if I thought about, you know, like, what was that movie where, where the nuns were, like, turned upside down in, like, cross poses and combusted into flames and circled around this devil kid in the air? Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's really all this movie had. I mean, like, and some jump scares and a few frightening moments, but it didn't, in terms of just, like like horrific like violence and, and scary moments like it didn't it didn't really have a lot there was definitely like tension built up but it it just kind of uh 
Like, it, it fell flat for me. Yeah, no, I, I, I do agree. Mm -hmm. um, some of the scares, in my opinion, were, were quite creative. So, in closing, what was your, like, what's your final opinion on the film? Um, in closing, this is, this is actually, like, I don't watch a whole lot of Netflix. This is one of the first Netflix movies I've watched. Um, I feel like for what it is, like, I, I, I have nothing to compare it to in terms of, like, the quality of other Netflix movies, but it, it seems like something that could have easily have been in the theater and probably would be a lot better than some of the horror movies that are theatrically released. Um... I I don't know. It's not one that I would revisit. I don't think. I think I got everything out of it that I needed to. Well, in my well, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's it did its job. Okay. Big twist in the end, and I'm assuming that's what the the guys are looking for. So. And as we were talking about, there were some memorable moments, and the fact that we've discussed it for so long means it did do some things right. So, I will give the film credit where, where it's due, but even I, someone that's not the biggest horror film enthusiast, like I really watch horror films, I could tell that it took inspiration from a few other films, and there were moments where I could see the influences a little bit too much that I would have, than I would have liked. Like, it felt like it lacked originality at some times. Oh yeah, it was definitely, it was, like I said, it was very generic, and mm. they were just, like, copying and pasting from all these other movies, especially, like, within the Conjuring universe, or anything with, like, a child, and, like, ghosts and hauntings. Um, but the fact that they, you know, they had this twist, it did, it did make it different, it, it, it does stand out from the crowd, for that fact alone, but it didn't really pay off enough for me in the end, that I would, like, elevate it above those very much. Mm. Okay, well then, so what would you say is your final rating? Because I think we, we might give this... I know, I'm interested to see, out of 100, what would you say this film is? So my final rating for this is 60%. Oh, I just I, gave it 65. I, just, I literally 60, just gave it 65. So 65. we actually, we were in the same ballpark. We were in the same ballpark. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I, I was kind of wavering. Like, I thought, like, you know, it might have been 65, but... I want to give it a 60 just because it didn't, it didn't, it, you know, it tried to be original, it tried to be different, but it didn't really give us anything new. It didn't really make us think about it very much. I mean, like you said that you noticed these things earlier on, but I feel like, you know, I don't want to be like hand fed something as, as a movie viewer. I want to kind of figure it out on my own, but I just, I didn't get enough to sink my teeth into and just like yeah. where think about where this was going. I think that the movie as a whole was just kind of like generic scenes like pieced together leading up to the the twist in the end and then there was like that last little part. There was there was nothing to distinguish the bulk of the movie from any of the other movies that it's you know trying to emulate. Hmm. No, I do I do agree with you there. Um, mm. but sure guys, I think that is it for our review, our discussion. Um, but guys, honestly, I just want to say thank you so much to Zach because he is, li it's literally two in the morning for you now, isn't it? Oh, that's nothing. It, it, it so is. So like, you must actually just be exhausted. So thank you so much for, 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 for collaborating with me on this. But guys, seriously, head over to his channel. I put the description in the link down below. Literally, this guy is grinding hard. I mean, he's putting out like videos almost every day in terms of movie reviews. So if you're a movie buff, you have to check out his channel. But dude, again, thank you so much for being on, on this with me. Um, Thank you, you're Caleb. awesome. I'm loving your content. So you're awesome. I love up. your content too. I love your vinyl awesome. pops. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can see them over there, guys. But sure, yeah. guys, that's, I think that's it for us. You're awesome. We love you. See you soon. Check. You can see this is how we've been talking. So you can see he's over there. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. So, dude, honestly, you're awesome. Thank you so much for this. See you soon. Yo, what is up? I just saw Judy, so we're gonna discuss it. Now, Judy is a biopic about Judy Garland, who famously played Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz.